We're back with another GMK Tech Mini PC, a new CPU, and some nice new color schemes to go along with it. So how does the Knuckbox K6 compare to the competition? That's what we're going to answer just after this message. Ease Us To Do Backup Home is an award-winning backup solution to keep your data safe. Backup, clone, upgrade, or transfer your system easily, and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. Jim Ktex Knuckbox K6 comes with AMD's penultimate mobile CPU, the Ryzen 7840HS, 8 cores, 16 threads, and the fastest integrated graphics currently available. It's packaged in this mini with two new updated color schemes, and they look much nicer than the previous efforts. One change I don't like is the update of material from metal to plastic for the midsection of the case. But it is still solid and good quality plastic, unlike some other brands, which shall remain nameless. But you can't beat that premium metal feel. There's a little creak on the top lid, but apart from that, it's pretty good. Overall, I think it's a nice looking box in a sea of bland. You can find the Knuckbox K6 on the GMK Tech official website in various configurations. There's even bare bones for those wanting to put in their own memory, storage, and OS which starts from $430 US after the coupon. While in Amazon US, the K6 Steel Blue is $600 after the coupon, and the Space Blue, which I think looks even better, is currently slightly cheaper at $588 US. Whichever you go for, the configuration on Amazon is a 1TB Gen 4 NVMe drive and 32GB of memory at $5600, same as the unit I'm reviewing. The K6 comes with an accessory kit with some new items I haven't seen included before. The power supply is smaller than usual for the wattage, but there's also a screwdriver and plastic prying tool for opening it up, which is new. It also comes with a monitor mount, manual, and HDMI cord. The ports on the K6 are similar to other mini PCs in this range. On the front, a reset button, audio jack, USB 4 40 gigabit, and dual USB 3 10 gigabit. On the back, USB 2 and USB 3 5 gigabit. For display output, you've got a DisplayPort and HDMI 2.0. And for networking, dual Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN jacks are included. The K6 is powered by a barrel jack connector. You can run three displays on this one, up to 4K 60Hz for DisplayPort and HDMI. And the USB 4 port should support up to 8K 60, even though it's not mentioned in the specs. Just like GMK Tech's previous minis, you can open this one pretty easily by popping off the top lid. And then there are four screws for this new part. Now you know what the screwdriver is for. And it also helps to use the prying tool provided to get it out. Watch out for the fan cable. And look at that. Previous criticism has been listened to. The memory and storage now have cooling. A fan for both. And a heatsink on the NVMe drive too. I almost feel like dancing. Almost. You can expand storage with an additional 2280 Gen 4 NVMe drive, and underneath the first one is the M.2 Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth card, which is a MediaTek RZ616. Any configuration apart from the bare bones will have Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. The K6 passed my Ubuntu test off a USB drive, with everything such as audio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet working fine. One of my favorite minis of late last year also had the Ryzen 7840HS CPU. So I thought the B-Link SO7 would be a good comparison for the GMK Tech Knuckbox K6 as we hit the benchmarks. In single core Cinebench, the K6 is 3% behind the SO7 at the default balance power mode, but you can go into the BIOS and change it to performance, which also increases power consumption, heat, and fan noise. This way, it beats the SIR 7 slightly. In multi-core, it's almost 4% behind the SIR 7 at default. But with the power limit increased, the K6 beats the SIR 7 by around 1%. However, in video encoding, the K6 managed to beat the B-Link SIR 7 with the default balance mode. It's only 1%, so not a huge deal, but it's interesting. That increases to a 3% lead with the performance mode. The integrated graphics benchmark has the two trading blows for second place. Small variances within the margin of error. 
Overall, the K6 performs almost identically to the B-Link Sur 7. The Lexa 1TB Gen 4 NVMe drive performs decently with sequential reads and writes. It's hitting above Gen 3 speeds on both, but isn't the fastest drive I've tested. My original plan was to compare the K6 against the Sur 7 in games, but the results were coming up pretty much identical. So I decided to go off on a tangent. In this video, we're going to see how AMD's best integrated graphics hold up at 4K with simpler games and emulators, with a 1080p result for comparison. In Dota 2, there's just over a 100 FPS average at 4K compared to 155 at 1080p. Valorant has a much bigger gap between the two, under 100 FPS at 4K compared to over 200 at 1080p. Wow, 4K hits League of Legends hard. Still a decent frame rate, but far behind the 1080p result. Counter-Strike 2's low preset uses image upscaling for better frame rates. Normally, I don't enable this for my tests, but it's part of the preset, so I'm leaving it in. About half the frame rate for 4K. Forza Horizon 5 is one of the less demanding modern games, and upping to 4K brings back less than half the frames. GTA 5 came out in 2015 on PC, and it still can't be played at 4K on integrated graphics. At a good frame rate anyway. Testing Wii U emulation now, the hardest to emulate game runs at 4K about as well as it did on the Wii U. Wipeout HD Fury looks amazing at 4K with a PS3 emulator, but falls below 60fps, so it's not as smooth as I'd like. I need to replay it at 4K someday, but let's enjoy some of that eye candy. So that was pretty interesting, right? While I didn't test 1440p because of time constraints, just take the frame rate number halfway in between the two and you'll be in the ballpark. The last gaming test is to connect my eGPU with an RTX 3070 to the USB 4 port and I tried out Starfield at 4K with DLSS. It's working fine. Here are the power options some will find useful. CPU max temp at 87 is pretty close to the Sur 7, but jumps to the 90s with max performance. While fan noise is higher on this one at both idle and load. That new fan cooling the memory and SSD isn't one with large blades and adds to the noise. With performance mode enabled, maximum fan noise reaches a new high. I think it's best to stick to balance mode or even try quiet if you want to reduce fan noise further. It's not a quiet mini, and it is one of the noisier ones under load. The K6's idle power draw is slightly higher than the Sur 7's, but the maximum is 10 watts lower, and considering CPU performance was only down a few percent at worst, it's a good result. But if you do go with maximum performance, the power draw is similar to the Sur 7. The Lexa NVMe drive's maximum temperature is similar to what I saw in the Sur 7. Alright, so let's summarize. The GMK Tech Knuckbox K6 has good CPU and GPU performance. It comes with SSD and RAM cooling, a new addition. Opening it is pretty easy, and the accessory kit includes the tools you need to get the job done. The two new color schemes look great, and are a nice improvement over the previous efforts. That being said, the metal case has now been switched for a plastic one. I'm not sure how useful dual 2.5 gigabit is for most users, I think a different port would have been a better choice to replace one of them with. And finally, fan noise has gone up in both idle and load when comparing previous GMK Tech minis. Alright, so that's the Knuckbox K6. Some big changes and improvements over previous efforts. 
But if you want something from the Intel side, there's a GMK Tech Knuckbox K3 Pro, which also has USB 4, and you can check it out right here. Cheers!